Hey guys, Modell here, JL Life. I hope you guys are as excited as I am because today we installed the S-Tech. I know the wife's excited. Stay tuned. Install day. Oh man, I'm excited. So guys, real quick, I wanted to clarify some things um, that I wasn't entirely certain of when I did the unboxing. One was the, the pad that I wasn't too sure where it came from. It actually goes inside the casing of the Mopar cubby hole. Uh, so what had happened was my wife actually purchased um, the breaker switch. Not saying um, she purchased the breaker switch extra for twenty dollars, and Scott, the owner of S Tech, included both of the cubbies there and there for free, uh, which are normally twenty six bucks for the two of them. And of course, they are not necessary to install the switches, but it really helps do the clean install and it helps protect the switches. Now, I also had another one of my my friends on Facebook or one of my followers, Miles. Uh, shout out to you for asking the question. These switches are water resistant. They are sealed switches and they should hold up to normal water conditions inside the Jeep. Um, um, Scott, the owner of Vestec, was very clear to make sure don't submerge them. Um, but of course, we all know if you're getting that much water inside the Jeep, you're probably going to be having other issues rather than worrying about your switches. Uh, I believe that is all I needed to clarify. Uh, two things that were in the box that I did not mention were s -Tech stickers. All right, guys, let's jump into it. Hey, guys, real quick before we get started, one more thing I wanted to add with, about the switches. They're all handmade in Colorado and the U.S. of A. They aren't assembled by no plant. Um, so, American made. All right, guys, so let's get started. So step number one is going to be putting on the bracket. Uh, this piece right here, it's going to be in this orientation. Uh, the holes, the side with the two holes is going to be pointing down. The three holes is going to be angled into the Jeep, uh, facing to the battery. Uh, first thing we're going to do, I already loosened them, is we're going to take out this bolt and this bolt, and we're going to be reusing them, so don't lose them. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take the bolts that came with the hardware of the kit, and we're going to enter it in the side uh, closest to the front of the Jeep and try to get the factory bolt back in. Okay, <laughs> took a minute, but I got it. So what you want it to look like is getting both bolts in at the same time will make things a lot easier. It took some wiggle, but it fit. Uh, I just cut away because I didn't want you guys seeing me struggle too long because struggling is just boring to watch. Um, but I got it in, have both bolts in, and we can start with this and bolt it back into the frame. Make sure you get both bolts back in there. There we go. What's an insult if you don't encounter problems, right? Improvise, adapt, overcome. My guessing is I'm going to have to cut away to go get my open into the sockets, wrenches. Yeah, I'll be right back. So, for the side closest to the front, we're just going to use a crescent wrench. Alright, 
Next up, next is gonna be the distribution box. Wanna make sure the sticker is facing up. The mounting holes are gonna be obviously on the bracket. Uh, you're gonna use the first and the last one. Morning hole. guys, so I realized that when I was watching my video this morning that uh, there were some problems with the editing and my phone didn't record certain parts of it uh, where it cuts off. Um, here in the video where I'm going to insert this, um, we are just bolting on the power distribution box to the bracket. I'll enter a still after this little clip, uh, what it should look like. Then after that, we start disconnecting the battery. And uh, just a reminder, there are three spots we need to dislocate on the battery. One is on top of the battery itself. Uh, we're going to be going for the negative terminal. And the other two are on the sidewall, right where I'm standing. And you'll see me taking those off in the video still and um, removing them from the, the ground and stuffing a rag in between them so they don't ground out and uh, start a live circuit again. Uh, sorry for not catching this earlier. Uh, and hopefully it doesn't happen again. Cool. Remove the tin, don't lose them. Um, next. Like I said, you're going to pull out the cables. Uh, well, let's see here. One. And there you go. All this comes off as a big unit. So, there we go. Push that guy out to the side. So, the the cables are going to want to just go back to where they've been resting. So just, you can either shove a rag in there, uh, which is probably what I'm going to do. Uh, but just be careful because once they start connecting back to where they were connected, uh, you're going to get a live circuit again. So rag, and I'm just going to shove that down there. Just keep it out of the way. So what's super cool with this, um, which I really like, is that he already has all the hot leads numbered to which switch they go to too cool all right so uh next thing we're going to do is we're going to follow down our wires here uh, we got two long ones that come out obviously we got the battery terminal the 12 volt and we got our switch lead that's going to go inside so what we're going to do is we're going to wire this or run this um through the firewall and to the cabin so the way I'm gonna get down there is in between the fuse block and the body, uh, right in there, you can see some light from the ground. We're gonna run our lead down there, then through the firewall boot. So, let's... So, let's see if I can get this on camera. There we go, as you can see the hole right down there. We're gonna feed it in there. Push it down. If I'm gonna snag anything, it should drop nice and easy. Oh, that's the only way it carries it down. Come on, get down there. All right. We're gonna go underneath. We can see our cable right there. So as I said before, I've installed the Mopar switches and when you buy the Mopar kit, it comes with extra rivets. Uh, so uh, you can remove the rivets in the fender well, uh, make it easier to get to the boot. I didn't remove mine, so I had extra. Uh, when me and the wife were doing something else on her JL, um, we removed the rivets. We just haven't put in the new ones yet. 
Um, you don't have to remove the rivets to get this done. I did. Um, I didn't on my Jeep. We did for hers for a different project. We just haven't re-riveted it back. Um, anyways, what it allows us to do is crank that bad boy up onto the tire. And we can see up in there. So to orient yourself, I'm showing this view just so you know exactly where I'm laying head next to the front passenger tire. I'm going to cut away, put the phone where my face is so you can see where I'm looking at so you know where to run the line. I need to be careful under here. The wife likes to mud. One wrong move. I'm going to get dirt in my eyes, my ears, my nose. <sighs> okay, guys, so you can see the line that I fed through by the fuse box right here. This line right here is actually the project I was talking about. This is our air hose uh, that we installed to the front air locker. Um, this is what we're gonna be following as it goes into the bed of the, the Jeep. So up here, let's get me up there. Right there, you can see the boot. We cut into it already. I might have to make it a little bigger to get this to fit. Um, if I have problems getting it to fit smoothly, which I don't foresee a problem because it's a pretty thin line, I'll just grease the line and duct tape it or electrical tape it and feed it through. But right out, get there he goes, dirt in the eye, son of a gun. But there it is. So from the outside, I just kind of give you guys a good lineup. Here's the front passenger tire, and right underneath the fender well, you can see the phone in there. You see the line, it's just right up there. Right. Right. Make sure we get a keep a good angle here. At least try, huh? All right, guys, we're in the passenger side. We're going to go ahead and show you where the other boot's at and get through. This is probably the most difficult part, which ain't saying much. This isn't too hard. It's just tedious. Hey, guys, we're under the glove box right now. Uh, the boot is just underneath it, behind it. Uh, I'm going to try to show you without blinding you with my flashlight. So right up here, you, let's go a little dimmer. There we go. So you see the airline uh, poking through. There's the same boot. We're just going to make that a little bigger um, and pull through the line. What is up, guys? So we're going to go smart here. I got some wire. We're going to push it through the boot. Once it's all the way through, I'm going to hook it. I'm going to connect the line to it, and we're going to pull it back. So let's get her done. And we're going to be going in from the inside. So pro tip. Uh, once you're shoving it through the boot, hook it down so when you're feeding it in, it'll angle down rather than going up. Uh, there's wires in there, so be careful. Uh, you don't want to jam into the middle of the wiring harness that's already going through it and break something. Um, so, yeah, make sure you, you hook it and you just kind of feed it in like that. And, of course, if you're closer to the outside... Um, It'll also make it easier because you don't have to go behind the wiring harness, but before it. So All right, so just to show you guys, underneath, I ran my chicken wire to the boot. And we should be able to see it. Oh, yep, there it is. Let me flip the camera around so I can see what I'm pointing. There it is. So we're going to pull that down. Electrical tape the line to it. I'm really sorry. This part is just so hard to 
film by myself. So I'm gonna hook it like that. I'm gonna feed the wire over it, bend it down, and I'm just gonna tape it to make sure there's no sharp ends for it to get caught on. And we're gonna just pull, pull back a bit more through. of it out. So that's what it's gonna look like. And we're gonna duct tape this together. Make sure we duct tape this together because we don't want no, no sharp edges to get caught on, right? Get our ET. And just as the famous line in Jurassic Park goes, we spare no expense. Use plenty of that tape. a little spot I want to get more where the wire connects to the chicken wire so since I am using this method I'm gonna go ahead and grease the, the wire on the electrical tape before I pull it through make things a lot easier so I'm just gonna use automotive grease grease up where I got the electrical tape. Get nice and slick. All right, back inside, pulling the line through. It's already greased. Have a rag with you just in case your hands get a little slippery, but start pulling it up. Yeah, look at that. That was like butter. There it is, there's our line. We're gonna take it, uh, the electrical tape off and get this wire out of the way. Too easy. And so with this whole spare no expense for the electrical tape, it takes a minute to unravel it all. Uh, all right, so after you get it pulled through, make sure you pull it all the way through. Don't break nothing. Uh, this is gonna be the easy part. One thing I really enjoy about this kit pre-wired when you buy the Mopar switches you got to actually build your electrical harness um, kind of a pain in the butt but it's it's doable uh, plug and play rock on All right, so we're getting to the easier stuff now uh, next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing the glove box and we're going to be prying off the control uh, center in the middle of the Jeep to get behind it to finish running our wire and taking out the cubby hole and replacing it with our new switches and empty box now I realize I have another really bad habit instead of looking at the camera I'm always looking at the screen which I break eye contact with you guys we need to fix that <laughs> I, need, I, I need a better camera so we're gonna remove the glove box super easy uh, first thing we're gonna do make sure you guys can see there is that hinge support right here. What you're gonna do is just push in the glove box a little bit. You're gonna pull it up towards you. You'll hear the snap. Then you're gonna pull it out towards the driver. And that just pops right out. And so this guy will be hanging loose. Next thing you're gonna do is right here at the top. Can you see it? Yeah. You're gonna push the glove box up a little, push that in and it drops. There we go. Now we're behind it. We can take our our wire and just put it right up through there. And there it is. See it? Yeah, you do. Yeah. Alright, so let's remove the control center. Plastic removal tool. You're going to start on this side. Let's pry it open. Work your way all the way over. Voila. So, on the back of this guy, we're only plugged in at two spots right now. Um, right here, both these are super easy to remove. You're just going to pinch it, pull the tab in, and pull out. Same thing with the ignition. You're going to pinch. Let's see if I can work this without having to hold the camera. Right, so, you're just going to, again, 
push down the tab and pull out. Camera overboard. Next thing we need to do is remove this screw. Don't lose it, we'll need it. And you can just pull this guy out. So, yeah, so from here, we're gonna have some more wires to unplug. Um, let me take that off the phone. So we got plugs right there, there, and there. Let's start with these guys. Okay, I need a break away just so I can maneuver around the shifter. So let's go ahead and uh, get all these things unplugged. I guess we don't really need to. Um, we're gonna be removing the cubbies next. So we got a screw, 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 and screw. Uh, let me go get the proper tool right, here. So we're gonna disconnect a couple of the wires. Uh, just give us a little bit more elbow room. Uh, we're gonna start from the right, which is gonna be the black plug. Uh, you're just gonna squeeze and pull. Gray plug is next. Squeeze and pull. The one next to those two plugs. Squeeze and pull. All right, so with those guys removed, I was able to flip it around uh, closest to me. I'm gonna take a drill. Uh, we got a 5.5 millimeter um, hexagon, and we're just going to remove all the screws holding the cubbies together. down and this should come right out ta-da all right guys mopar cubbies buy them two main reasons one it protects your switches and two it looks so much better so when you don't buy it you're still going to get the switches it's just not it'll still have the face plate but it's not going to be in this box it's just going to be what's inside of it which is a bunch of wires um scott the owner uh pre-cuts it Installs it all, makes it super simple, plug and play. I love it. Buy them. Um, they're 26 bucks if you want to go and buy them yourself from somewhere else, which is totally fine. I believe Scott told me if you uh, purchase the the breaker, which I showed in the unboxing, he provides these free. Uh, they should also be on his website. Uh, let's get it in. All right, guys, let's let's get them in. So we're gonna drop this on. Make sure all the holes line up. The, well, it's flipped around now, but the left side goes on first, the right side goes on second. Now we're gonna get our, our screws and we're gonna put them back in. I needed to see. And we got that. Make sure we got them all. One, two, three, four. We are missing one. So, show you guys something real quick. So, my Mopar box. Came a little snipped. Hold on, we're gonna. So here's the where the last screw goes. There's obviously the clip that was on it snapped off. Uh, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. It's gonna hold on well, uh, mainly because this guy right here is gonna hold on from there. We got the screw back here. Uh, it'll make do, but this is where the last screw goes. It's just mine was a little damaged. So let's go ahead and run all these back in. Do not over tighten. 
you will break things. There we go. All right. Uh, next thing we're going to do. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to run the wire behind the control center uh, to our switches. All right, guys, give you the line that I'm going to be using. You see that little speckle of light back there? That's where we're going to run it through. I said, fit it through. Got my wire. I'm going to put you up here. Turn the camera around. All right, guys, so now we start plugging everything back in. Let's go ahead and start with our main wire to our switches. Let's be mindful how you're plugging things in. Uh, make sure the tab lines up with the snap. Plug in your gray switch. Get you a little closer here. Snap that in. So with your gray and your black guys, uh, they only fit one way. Um, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up but it goes uh, gray black gray black um, so got everything plugged back in we're gonna enter it back into the dash area uh, be sure you find yourself the first switch you unplug make sure you put that on top so we don't bury it and have to pull things back off to get to it so we're gonna just line up the, the tabs Make sure no wires are getting pinched and just plugs back in. This should be done easy. If you're fighting it, something's in the way. All right. Now we're going to do the top half. Now let's get our stuff plugged back in. The red switch goes on, plugs in. Don't forget to do your ignition. That's the two. You're gonna line up your, your plugs. And again, this should be done super easy. Should not feel a lot of resistance. Like I'm feeling. Let's get that in there. There we go. So, so the problem I was getting hung up on is this little lip needs to get tucked in first. Um, behind the dash, not on the outside of it. So let's try that again. So I'm gonna get that in. There we go. There it is. So now what we got left to do is to wire the power. Very close. So we got our ground that we're gonna need to connect. We have our battery terminal we're going to need to connect and we got to get our inline fuse done um, if you guys remember this guy from the unboxing it's going to be going on the red wire we're going to crimp it down and it's going to plug into the fuse box we'll piggyback on whatever fuse that we need um, to power the line so with the positive terminal um, if you guys remember the circuit breaker what we're going to do? No, you're 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 fine, brother. It's not gonna pick up on that. It will, but it's fine. Right, Don't worry about it. We're good. I'm gonna wait <laughs> I have considerate neighbors. So what we're going to do with this, the circuit breaker, is a positive line is going to be going into it. I actually had to go buy some additional. Um, 8 gauge wire uh, and I'm going to run it off of the other end and it's going to be going to the battery uh, closer to the battery the better um, what this is essentially going to do uh, it's a 60 amp breaker so once the line gets overloaded of more than 60 amps it's going to switch off um, prevents a fire uh, which we don't want happening so let's get that done so what made me a little positive lead uh, wire uh, it was 8 gauge wire, heat shrink, super simple. And that, again, that's going to be what's leading from the battery to my circuit breaker. And the line from the power distribution center will be going to the other end. Um, so what we're going to do now is loosen 
on the positive side. This bolt right here. Well, be careful to make sure you don't connect your middle piece between the two terminals. I'm gonna loosen that. Let's see if I can, there we go. Put that down. tighten never really need to over tighten the battery terminals um, you just end up breaking things so just be careful right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the breaker connect breaker here Ooh. almost dropped the bolt down there and there we go you good and we're going to get a power lead we're going to connect it to the other side. It's only finger tightened right now. We'll give it a little bit of a torque once we get things squared away. Next, we're going to grab our inline fuse and the little red live lead. I'm gonna plug that into that. Give me a little bit more wire here. There we go. connection all right time to tap into the fuse box so once you open it up what you want to locate is this 20 amp fuse right here the little yellow guy uh, where is the fuse puller right here so what we're going to do get your little fuse puller out and pull out that 20 make note where it is important that pulled out we're going to take that fuse we just pulled and we're going to plug it into the extra slot in the inline fuse the piggyback fuse that we got in our kit plugged in It'll look like that this guy's just going to plug right in to where that 20 amp fuse was make sure it seats fully down and let's find the best way to wire this right, the way we're going to run the line is this right in between this little groove right here or the one right next to it doesn't matter just down there and it's going to run in between the power distribution center right here. Um, that's it. Plugs back in. Snaps in without any resistance. Now what we gotta do is just line everything up neatly and we're done. Sorry guys, one last detail I forgot to mention is that, remember this guy that we loosened at the beginning? We're gonna loosen him a little bit more. We gotta ground our line and 
once that's in and we tighten everything back up plug all the battery back in we're done all right guys everything got buttoned back up you got the circuit breaker everything's plugged in where it should be i reconnected the negatives down here i do need to reconnect the negative here glad i'm doing another walkthrough huh so, wrong one right here so that's difficult there we go. that down all right so with any luck I did everything correct I'm just kidding I know I did everything correct come on now everything plugged in nice this I'm going to need to get some some short bolts and I'm just going to screw in and bolt to the top of this to hold it in place there uh, tucked all the wire away I like the coil wrap all around it. it makes it look nice so it's not too rowdy here are going to be all your hot leads where you plug your accessories into um, again they're all numbered so it makes it easy to know which one you're plugging into where and that is it let's go inside and check out the interior and give the test run and see if it runs all right guys Here's the big moment. Ooh, that looks good. Now we just gotta hook up some accessories to them. Ah, that looks good. What do you guys think? So my victory lap, I kind of forgot about this guy. <laughs> Not a big deal. Um, take the zip ties that were provided. Uh, zip tie the line out of the way so it doesn't get pinched by anything. Doesn't get pinched by the uh, glove box once we put it back in glove box goes in super easy um, just make sure we line up at the bottom you're going to plug this guy back into the side and it just pushes right past that you just shove it in and it's in I'll be right back So guys, let's finish with the install review. Uh, I like it, it was super easy, uh, pretty quick. Took about an hour and a half time. Everything was truly plug and play, which was nice. The only tedious task was just running the line. Uh, once that was done, it, it, I mean, it's super easy. Uh, I gotta say, I like this kit. It's a lot cheaper than the Mopar. Um, I'll say they don't look as aesthetic as the Mopar switches, uh, but I don't have a problem with that. The wife doesn't have a problem with that. They're probably about half the cost of the Mopar switches um, when it comes down to everything being paid for. You got two different, several different options in two packages. You, there's the six switch, there's the four switch. Um, they come in different colors of red, green, blue, and amber. Um, you can also get the face plates of different colors of carbon fiber, black, or chrome. The six panel costs $280. The four panel costs $200. There's no taking it to the dealership to get flashed. Uh, so that saves you money there. And of course, the Mopar switches in themselves cost about $375. Um, but of course, you can find them on sale. I was lucky enough to find mine on sale for about $280. Um, and that wasn't too bad of a gig. So, uh, other things I like about it is that it's it's clean, it's simple. Uh, other, if you want to install your own switches, which is fine, uh, you're you want to put it in the dash, you're cutting into the dash. If you're fine with that, that's fine. I prefer the easy bolt-on stuff. Uh, it looks cleaner. Um, no issues with it. The three negatives that I have found with the switches is that there's no inside lead like with the Mopar switches. Uh, so anything that you want to run from the interior of the of the jeep you're going to have to run through the firewall back into the uh the, the hood of the of the the jeep um you can't turn them on when the jeep is off and there is no backlight on them so you might be fumbling around a bit in the dark if you're trying to turn on your lights um the mopar switches do have a backlight to tell you which number they are and they also are capable of being turned on when the jeep is turned off so, I mean, those are the only real negatives. 
they're not that big of a deal in my opinion. I, I like the switches. Um, you know, if you guys want to buy one, that's awesome. Uh, I was reached out to by the owner um, after I did my unboxing. Um, he was excited about me doing a video on it, and he actually provided me with a discount code for his JL switch uh, kits. Uh, if you type in JL Life 20, uh, you'll get 20% off. Um, I would only suggest actually using that on the 6 switch, so you'll get $56 off. Uh, if you are going to go for the 4 switch panel, I would actually suggest using the discount code of STEC50, which just gets you $50 off, so $150 bucks for a 4 switch panel, which is awesome. Um, I mean, but if you don't like it, totally fine. I plan on doing an, a review of actually installing lockers and lights to it pretty soon. Hopefully within the week. Um, if you guys have any questions, by all means, shoot them to me. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Uh, if you guys could like, comment, subscribe, dislike, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just excited to be doing these videos. Thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to watch my video. Uh, I hope you subscribe. I hope you share. And I hope to continue to grow as a channel and just continue to have fun and make these videos. Y'all take it easy.